Hey, this is Jay, and recently over on the Unity forums, I saw somebody asking a question about whether they should use multiple prefabs for something that they, they were all going to be the same thing, but they were supposed to look different. And their thinking was that since they each had to look different, they needed to use a different prefab for each one. And while you can do that, you don't have to do that. So I'm going to show you a real easy way so that you can use one prefab and have many different kind of game objects from that. Now, they're all going to be similar game objects. You would probably use them for the same type of thing. You're not going to have one prefab and create every game object from it. But this is a technique that can be used in a lot of different ways. So I already have most of this set up right here. I'm using sprites that came from Kenny.nl. Awesome place to get 2D sprites that can be used absolutely free. I have a button on the screen called Make New Animal. It's not hooked up to anything yet, but we'll get to that. And I have a scene manager, which is just an empty game object that I'm going to be able to throw a script into later. Let's go over and look at prefabs. I have one prefab here is called Animal. There's a transform. There's a sprite renderer, and as far as the sprite that is showing, it's none at this point. There's a Box Collider 2D on it, and the Box Collider 2D is simply there to give me something to grab onto because I have a script here called Drag with Mouse, and that allows me to drag this game object around the screen with the mouse. But that only works when you have a Box Collider on the object. And finally, there is another script called Animal. And that basically just has a place to put the animal's name and a boolean that's returned to origin. That way if that's checked and you drag the animal away from where it is instantiated and you let go of it, it'll snap back. And that's simply there because for this prefab in a game that I was making, that's an action that I needed. Let's take a look real quick at those two scripts. Uh, first of all, drag with mouse. I'm not going to go through this. If you need a script like this, you can go ahead and just pause the video and copy this down. It's, it's very simple here. And the animal script, there's a vector 2 at the top, original position. There's a string for the name of the animal. And then there's a boolean to set if I want it to return to the origin. And you can see that's done right down here and on mouse up. So if I'm dragging this around the screen and I let it go somewhere, it checks if return to origin is set to true, then it sets the transform.position to the original position and that it grabs in the start function. So not a lot here, but we will be looking back at this variable, the string variable called animal name in a little bit. So back over here in Unity, let's go ahead and create the script that we need. And I'm going to call it spawn animal. And I don't need either of those. So the first thing we're going to need is a public game object. And that is going to be the animal prefab. And that's going to hold that base prefab that I showed you a moment ago. And we also need a public sprite. And these two empty, wait a minute, these are the square brackets. Two empty square brackets after it means that we need an array, a sprite variable that's actually going to hold more than one object. So this array is going to be called animal sprites. Now let's go ahead and save that swing back over into Unity. I'm going to drag this script onto this scene manager object. Select that. And you can see over here in the inspector, there's a place for the animal prefab. Might as well go ahead and pull that in there. And there's also a thing that says animal sprites size zero. If you've never used arrays before in Unity, they're really kind of cool, especially the way you can fill them in like this. I'm going to go into sprites. I'm going to select three of these things. To do that, you click on one, hold shift, and click on another one, and all of those highlight, but then you lose the inspector. So here's a little trick just in case you didn't know about this. Let me select scene manager again, and the little lock right up here, I'm going to click that, and now this inspector will stay there no matter what else I click on. So I'm just going to select that one and go down here to Panda, and I'm going to drag these right over here. You can see the little plus show up. I'm going to drop it and this fills all of those in. I'm going to go ahead as long as we're here and do the rest of these. And you could just do them all at one time. I just kind of want to show off a little bit here and just pull this in here, get the green plus and it adds those to the list. So now we have an array of sprites. Now these aren't prefabs but we're going to use those in the script to create different kinds of animal prefabs. So back over here in the script we're going to say public void make random animal. First thing we need is an integer 
an array index, an index into the array. And we're going to set that to random.range. And we're going to go from 0 because an array in C sharp starts at the 0 with element. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And we're going to go up to sprites.length. And that is the length of the array. Now we've got 10 animals in the array, but random.range when you're dealing with integers, it's inclusive of the first number of the minimum, but it's exclusive of the maximum number. So this will say 10, but it will only go from 0 to 9, which is exactly what we want. Then we also need to hold a sprite. So we're going to create a variable called animal sprite that is of type sprite. And we're going to grab that out of the animal sprites array at array index. So we got a random number here and we're using it in this line to grab one of those specific animal sprites. And finally we need a string variable called animal name and we're going to set that to the animal sprite dot name. So back over in Unity, panda is named panda, monkey is named monkey parrot is named parrot and so on. So we're just grabbing the name of the sprite and saving it in a string variable called animal name and we'll use it in just a moment. So let's go ahead and create a new game object and it's a new animal and this equals instantiate animal prefab. That's all we have to do there. We're not going to go ahead and position it. That's going to be different depending on what kind of game you're making. So now we have a new game object named new animal and we're going to set the name of that to animal name. And then we're going to set that actually inside of uh, one of the scripts. So we'll do a git component on animal, which is the name of the script that is attached to that prefab. And animal name is the name of the variable in there. And we'll just go look over here and see that. There it is right there. And finally, new animal dot get component and this is the sprite renderer dot sprite equals animal sprite so back up here we picked a random number using that random number we grabbed one of those animal sprites from the array and we hung on to that then we created a new animal game object and right down here at the last we looked in that sprite renderer and sprite and set it to that animal sprite that we grabbed a little bit ago. So I'm going to save this. That should be everything we need. Make sure I have no typos. I have a typo. What did I do wrong? Dot animal name equals animal name. Thank you very much. Let's try this again. All right, so we have this ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and over on the Make Animal button. we got to better unlock my inspector first. Let's click the little lock again. So the Make Animal button, I'm going to say on click. And I'm going to drag the Scene Manager down in here. And for the function, I'm going to go into Spawn Animal and Make Random Animal. Save that. Let's run it and see what happens. I'm going to click this. And we have a penguin, and a hippo, an elephant, and a panda. We'll probably get a, a repeat here at some point. There we go, another, another penguin. But you can see we are making random animals. And if we look over in the hierarchy, you can see there's the penguin, and the hippo, and the elephant, and the panda. So they're all being spawned from that original animal prefab, but they are actually different prefabs. In fact, if you go look in the inspector, you can see that the name for each one of them down here is Panda. And if I switch over to the pig, it says pig down in here. So the scripts themselves know what they are. So this is just one way that you can use uh, a single prefab and a bunch of different sprites to create lots of different game objects. And depending on what kind of game you're doing, this might be perfect for you. Uh, in other types of games, this isn't the right technique. But the cool thing about Unity is there's always another way to do something.